Well, good morning to everyone. Good morning. My name is Damon Hoyle here representing uh, Texas Education Agency. And so we're glad uh, to be here with you all. As you know, we've added some new vendors to the K through 12 COVID-19 testing project. And uh, we work in conjunction with the Texas Department of State Health Services, also known as DISHES. And so we're excited to be partnering with them. And we're excited today um, for our uh, vendor, Good Side Health. And so we'll get started in about another minute or two. I'm gonna let some more folks jump in. Um, how today will work is um, Good Side Health will go ahead and present. I'll turn it over to them in just a few to present. And then as they are presenting, there's a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen for all the participants. There's also a chat feature where you can just type in your questions. And then at the end, there'll be a portion of time to answer any questions um, that are not answered as they present. Um, if we do happen to run out of time, because we have about an hour with you all today, we will follow up via email with any unanswered questions. So at that time, I wanted to uh, formally welcome our good folks and good friends, vendors um, for COVID testing, Good Side Health. And so I'll turn it over to whoever that will be taking over from here. Over at Good Side Health. Oh, um, am I muted again? Okay. Hey everybody, this is this is Lindsay. I am the um, vice president of clinical operations for um, our urgent care side of Good Side Health, which is urgent care for kids. Our president, um, Kevin Pierce, is um, trying to get in right now. He was going to be the presenter for today, so we're going to see if he can jump on. If not, I will go ahead and start presenting for you guys. Got it. And when he jumps on right now, Lindsay, I have you as the co-host, so you can share your screen. But when he jumps on, I can easily make him the co-host. I think he is trying to get on right now, but if not, we can go ahead and keep going and I'll just share my screen with you guys so that we don't put a delay on y'all. Give me just a second. Okay, we'll let him take over once he gets in, but we'll go ahead and just go, go ahead and get started with you guys. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. I really appreciate you guys giving us the chance to kind of talk to you guys and introduce who we are and what we do. Um, we're really excited um, about um, being able to partner with you guys, and we're really excited about uh, stepping in because we, we, we know that we can help um, with the COVID testing that's going on in the schools right now. So um, I think that he is joining in as an attendee right now. Kevin, I don't know if you can take yourself off mute, but if you can, then I will let you take over. If not, we'll keep on going. So basically, Good Side Health and who we are, um, we are basically the, the nation's leading uh, provider in um, K through 12 in school health services. We're in a lot of schools across the state of Texas. We're, I believe, in over a thousand schools. We're in very different areas from rural to urban areas. We're also the parent company of urgent care for kids and virtual care for families, which is where we treat children and their families um, statewide through our brick and mortar clinics, um, as well as a virtual platform. I think what's important to know is that when the pandemic first started, we were very much frontline to help with um, COVID testing across the board, whether it be for just families, individual patients, or mass COVID testing, um, mass COVID testing across uh, different platforms and, and a lot of different people. So just to give you a background of our COVID-19 testing experience, one of the first things that we did was we did partner with El Paso community. Um, and we basically went down there, they cried out, had sent a call for help to come down and help set them up some drive-through testing um, facilities to help get their uh, community access to getting um, tested for COVID, which at the time was only the PCRs, but we did go down there. We were able to set up and successfully run four drive-through test centers for them. Um, and uh, that went from anywhere seeing 50 patients a day to well over that number of patients at the different sites. We also um, were contacted by uh, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, which is where a lot of our brick and mortar clinics are, and they were asking for help as well. And so we set up and operated an on-site um, healthcare clinic for them where we did all of the testing for COVID as well as other things. Um, and we did that for them, for their staff and for their faculty for over a year. Um, the other thing that we did, which was really fun for a lot of our staff, is that we were able to kind of partner and conduct testing for the Big 12 Conference as long 
also the AAC or the American Athletic Conference. Um, and then we were able to do all of the uh, COVID testing for the Big 12 Championship Games, the Cotton Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. Um, and the reason I say all that to say is that we are used to doing, you know, anywhere from small numbers of testing to where we tested, you know, 25 people to whether or not we were doing an actual Cotton Bowl when we were testing 250 to 300 people in such a short time frame, whether it be like an hour or two. So we have a lot of experience with mass COVID testing um, kind of all over the spectrum. Um, last summer or this past summer, we actually were contacted by the US Olympics um, where we did all of the COVID testing for the Olympic trials. Um, and that was for the, like their swim dive group and our wrestling gymnastics, track and field, things like that. And so we were able to kind of help them and, and it's continued on. We have now expanded um, all of our mask or congregated testing basically to larger arenas. We've done some musical events um, like Michael Buble, things like that. We partnered with um, some summer camps Camp Ozark and things like that to try to help get their kids um, back into back into their camps, and then some other um, people that continue to reach out as they need help. So we we we've done this. We we've been in it for a long time. We've been in it from the very start, um, and we've already got policies, procedures, and practices into into place. Um, and we're just happy to here to help. Kevin, I see that you are ready to jump in and unmuted. Would you like to take over from here? Sure. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. Thanks for uh, sticking with me there. Um, it doesn't look like my, my video is coming through, but uh, um, we, as long as you can hear me, I think you'll be all right. What we can do really quickly, Lindsay, uh, um, if you want to click on his name and promote him to be, because I think I made you calls, promote him to be a panelist and then you can promote him to a host and he can share a screen. Okay. Is there a way to just keep Lindsay sharing the screen and I can, I can just keep to make this easier? Oh, that's fine. We can do it that way too. Okay. Keep going, okay. sir. Yep. Yeah, excellent. Um, so like Lindsay was saying, I'll just add a, a couple of things there. Um, we, we stepped in very, very early on in the pandemic. Uh, we were, because of our unique background in healthcare, uh, we've been operating a multifaceted healthcare organization for over 10 years across Texas that includes you know, a lot of different types of care delivery. So when the pandemic hit and testing was, was uh, you know, obviously a, a huge issue and need, uh, we stepped in very early on and, and really started to understand uh, the how behind delivering congregate testing. And just because of the unique uh, network of healthcare professionals that we have in the state um, and all of the diff different ways we were delivering healthcare, it enabled us to put together a program that wasn't uh, necessarily you know, fit within the clinics, a traditional healthcare clinic, but, but more importantly, you know, built to fit K through 12 schools and built to uh, support congregate testing environments. Those are two very different things. Um, and just our, our unique background in healthcare and education um, allowed us to really expeditiously put that together. Um, and the only reason I really wanna double click on that is uh, that that is absolutely the reason that we're able to deliver a seamless and kind of successful testing program in schools, uh, primarily because, because we have the expertise in those arenas. Um, and it is, like I said, it is quite a bit different than your, your day to day healthcare delivery. So, um, I, I, you know, Lindsay did a great job of, of kind of providing the overview in the early, early slides, but I just wanted to emphasize that because um, as we look at, at what we're all facing as we reopen schools here, um, it is absolutely imperative to have uh, a deep expertise in healthcare to really be able to put these programs together on the fly and not not necessarily healthcare from a back office perspective, like processing a lab or things of that nature, but healthcare as delivering it out into the community, right? Having nurses and providers and, and that type of an expertise um, is really is really imperative. So, you know, I'll skip forward here to the to where we are in the presentation, which is why why to choose us. I, I mentioned a little bit of, of who we are and kind of our, our network of, of healthcare capabilities here in Texas. Um, I'll just say it again, we, we're here in Texas. You know, as we've looked at so many of our partnerships across Texas, one of the reasons we've been able to respond so quickly and efficiently and have such successful partnerships is because we are here. We're physically here. All of our team members, uh, from healthcare professionals to back office to all, all of our team members live, live in Texas and can deploy resources much, much quicker. And then one step further, uh, we build so much of our own, so many of our own programs. And so to the extent that we need to customize situations, we're able to understand it so very quickly. And we're able to, in the, in the background, make a lot of changes to fit the needs of pro and create programs that really serve 
um, our partners and what their goals are. So um, again, extensive experience specifically in, in congregate COVID testing. So not just COVID testing one at a time, but in a mass environment. We have a deep understanding um, in, our, in our company and in our programs and EDU, as well as healthcare, it is, it is our core business. Um, and then we have last, but, but certainly not least, one of the things that has really allowed us to uh, deliver a consistent solution is the relationships we have at the manufacturing level. So again, very early on, many of you have experienced this, um, when, when we needed COVID testing and our government and the normal channels were trying to get tests approved, you know, we were, we were trying to sprint in a system that, necessarily, that didn't necessarily allow us to sprint very fast. And so there was a few manufacturers that, that were able to, to produce a very um, uh, highly sensitive um, antigen test specifically, and COVID test specifically, that uh, we just happened to have really strong relationships with them prior to the pandemic. So when, when those tests became available and they became EUA approved, we just utilized those relationships to create large partnerships um, that allowed us to uh, purchase significant supply of COVID tests from very, very early on and continue to um, you know, capture an inventory and maintain an inventory that allowed us to support our partners. And because for the most part, we're focused on K through 12 and, and, and also the most vulnerable population throughout this pandemic, we've been able to, to, to maintain uh, our position at, at a very um, high allocation and a high prioritization with those manufacturers. So we have a really, really deep relationship. Um, the two that we'll get into here are Quidel and Abbott. Uh, we've been working, like I said, with both manufacturers, but Quidel um, a little bit earlier on than, than Abbott even on their antigen tests. And that's, that supply line has really uh, allowed us to maintain partnerships. There's been a ton of macro level shortages on testing, whether it be you know early stages with swabs or whether it be a little bit later with with just selling out of these antigen tests. Um, you know as programs have evolved, we've been able to maintain that supply and not have hiccups along the way. Certainly not here telling you that <laughs> that we're immune to macro level healthcare shortages. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, we are just highly prioritized and we've been able to secure very very uh, tight partnerships um, and alignment with those manufacturers that have allowed us to, uh, to really uh, deliver quality outcomes for our partners. Um, Lindsay, if you could go to the, to the next one. Uh, so current testing options, I mentioned it a second ago. We have two rapid antigen testing partners. Quidel is one manufacturer, and we actually use, currently have two approved tests through um, uh, through the state, through Texas Department, uh, through DSHS and TEA in this whole process here. Uh, we, have, we have two approved uh, antigen tests with Quidel. The first one being QuickView, which is very akin, very similar to the Binex now that I know a lot of Texas school districts specifically are familiar with because of the early on process uh, of distributing tests out to schools. The Binex now was actually the one that distributed. distributed. So the quick view is very similar from a, um, from a testing capabilities and, and process perspective. The second Quidel test is the Quidel Sophia, and we'll get into each of these in a little bit more detail. Um, and then Abbott by Next Now, I think many of you are familiar with. Uh, the one caveat here is, is that it's currently on national back order uh, and everybody's experiencing that. Uh, and then obviously PCR, which is a, a different testing uh, philosophy really than, than the antigen testing. Uh, we do plenty of PCRs across the state, and, and we do have a PCR process uh, as a part of this program. Um, and then again, future testing options, uh, we will always be evaluating and utilizing the current process with DSHS to, uh, to deliver uh, the best possible tests, uh, both in you know, sensitivity and specificity, but also as, as well as supply, right? Make, making sure that we have a good test that's highly dependable, but also uh, that we have access to it. And, and that's, uh, that's always going to be a focus. Um, okay, so diving a little bit deeper into each individual test. Um, the, I mentioned it a second ago, the, the Quidel Quick View. Uh, this has actually been one that, that, that we've been able to, to maintain a, a pretty solid supply of because of our relationship with Quidel uh, and unique alignment to deliver um, testing where it matters. Um, so this one is $19 per test. We have a minimum order of 25 tests. Um, it will result in 15 minutes 
Um, I will, with all of these, dive in a little bit deeper on the workflow uh, with our partners, but just to say that, uh, you know, generally speaking, we do not require everyone to stay on site for 15 minutes. So just when you see those timelines, don't think that you, you've got to, to have everyone sticking around for 15 minutes. We've developed process, processes that allow for uh, a much more efficient flow. Um, and then this is an anterior nasal swap. So again, um, you guys have probably seen it, but um, it, this is not the uh, the deep into the nostril, into the nasal cavity swab. This is this is the anterior nasal swab. Um, so if you could go to the next one. So here's a little bit more details around the process itself. I won't go through every single one in detail. Uh, I will summarize by saying for all of these, we, we will have materials and, and get into this a little bit later. We'll have materials available and you guys will all have access to us so that we can provide the deepest level of training and, and resources along the way. Uh, I don't expect everybody to, to read through all four steps here and, and really um, you know, grasp every single part of it, uh, but it is, it is pretty straightforward. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a four-step process uh, and it results very, very quickly. If we could go to the next one. Um, similarly, the, the Quidel Sophia. So the main difference with, with the Quidel Sophia versus the Quick View is that this one actually requires an analyzer. So um, it, it's a little, bit, um, a little bit different from that perspective, but from a testing capability perspective, it's very, very similar. Uh, it is an antigen test, just like the Quick View. Uh, this one is 1950 per test with a minimum of 25 tests. Uh, again, results in 15 minutes, also an anterior nasal swab. Uh, again, the caveat with the analyzer is um, because it does require an analyzer, there's an additional cost that goes along with, with that uh, or with the purchase of these tests. And that is a $1,200 per unit cost uh, for the analyzer itself. Um, and then I, I will just one more thing on the analyzer. It, uh, there may be situations depending on the program and the, the requests coming from our, uh, the districts. Uh, it does not mean that you only have access to one of these analyzers. In some situations you may need multiple. We'll work with the, the individual districts to make sure that we're giving uh, are fulfilling the needs and the goals of, of the district. Um, so the supplies needed, I've mentioned it, we've got the analyzer um, and then the, the kit itself. Um, again, here's all of the components of the kit uh, expanded for everyone to see. Um, it does have, uh, again, pretty minimal supply with regard to you know, general testing here. Um, not, not a very complex process with the SOFIA itself. Um, it, it actually does the reading. So that is one difference um, that you'll get all of these supplies. And if you're utilizing the Sophia, uh, the, the analyzer will uh, read the results for you. Again, here's the instructions for use. Um, all of these materials we will make available, um, not only in this presentation, but to our partners to make sure that they are fully equipped uh, and supported. But here's the detailed um, instructions for use. And then performing the test, um, there's a couple of things that I will mention here. I touched on it a second ago, the, the analyzer itself, the Sophia will read, will read the results. Um, there are two different uh, really programs here, processes, I should say. There is a walk away if you're gonna do a one-off individual test, you can do that. It's about a 15, uh, 15 minute process. The second part would be what we call the read now. Um, this can be used pretty effectively in more congregate environments. And the reason being is you, you can actually um, you can get more samples at one time and then allow those samples to actually sit for 15 minutes prior to inserting them into the analyzer. Um, and then within 10 seconds, you'll get the results. So you can allow multiple samples uh, to sit um, in parallel paths and, and result in, for congregate testing environments a little bit quicker. Okay, um, moving on to the Abbott by Next Now. Um, Abbott Binex now is a little bit more prevalent or has been throughout the state of Texas uh, because the state did purchase a supply of them and, and uh, distribute them out to the district. So there may be some level of familiarity with this, uh, but the Abbott Binex now is a rapid antigen test. It's a fully contained kit. It's $19 per test. Uh, the minimum order on this, this one is 40 tests. Uh, it will result in 15 minutes. And, and similarly, it is the anterior nasal swab. Again, Noted it a second ago, but just, just to emphasize, this one is currently on national back order um, and we'll continue to keep everyone updated as, as those supply lines change. Uh, we do have a, a very uh, high level 
strategic relationship with Abbott as well. And so we, we have uh, uh, a deep familiarity with this test and we've utilized it um, across the state quite a bit. If you could go to the next one. <clears throat> Again, um, here are the supplies contained within the, um, the Abbott Binex Now kit. Uh, you've got a nasal swab, uh, the reagent solution, testing cards, and then the timer stopwatch. It's all contained. It's a very uh, simple process. Many of you, again, have experienced it, um, and it is, it is something that we'll, we'll support for you as well. Uh, so the steps for use, uh, very similar. So you, 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 correct, or you collect the sample, uh, add the solution to the test card, uh, insert the swab to the test card and rotate, um, close card and set aside for 15 minutes. Um, and then that, at that point, you'll be able to read the results from the front of the card. Um, so very similar to the quick view as far as the process. Uh, moving on to PCR testing. So again, many of you are familiar with the antigen and PCR differences. Um, PCR is um, a process that, that um, require, requires a, a little bit longer of a lab uh, component to it. It, um, it is a higher level of accuracy, but it is uh, for congregate testing environments, it is just used differently. Um, and I would say maybe slightly less than, than you would see with the antigen test at this point. Uh, we use the TechPath uh, COVID-19 combo kit. Uh, and these are individual PCRs. They're $105 per test. Uh, the minimum order on these are 150 tests. And the results are expected within 24 to 48 hours. We've had a really, really good um, resulting history there. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, this one is different. It is the deeper swab is the nasal pharyngeal swab. So it goes deeper into the nasal cavity than does the, the antigen test. So staffing, um, I'll, I'll spend a little time here um, on the front end here. I'll tell you just how we do it. And then I'll tell you what maybe some of the differences that you'd experience with a partnership with GoodSide regarding staffing. But on-site staffing uh, is something that we can provide uh, we've been, uh, Lindsay mentioned it earlier, we've been providing uh, uh, tons of staffing in multiple different programs um, for the, really the past you know, year and a half here. Uh, but we can conduct either antigen or PCR testing uh, with our staffing uh, solution here. It is $95 per staff member per hour. And we do have a four hour minimum just to make sure that we, uh, we are able uh, to deliver uh, an adequate program there. And then the staffing class, cost do include the disposal uh, of, of the testing waste as well, just something to note. Okay, so what makes us different on staffing especially? So we, I mentioned it earlier, uh, our, we are a healthcare company. We're a healthcare company with access and um, you know, team members really across the entire state of Texas. And because we are a healthcare provider, it is our core business um, and not a lab. While we certainly have partnerships that allow us to flex up and down our staffing, we have many of our own team members uh, and healthcare professionals on our team um, that are ready to be deployed. Um, and so that is a huge differentiator from us, uh, for us, uh, Texas-based, again, uh, a multidisciplinary uh, disciplinary healthcare provider that has been doing this for 10 years. Um, so uh, it, it just gives us a unique advantage here and, and really delivers a, a quality outcome for our partners and that we're able to utilize not only our healthcare professionals on our team, but to the extent we need to add uh, staff members to it. We've got such a significant framework of healthcare professionals in Texas, of nurses, providers um, on staff, that it really allows us to deliver quality outcomes uh, and be extremely responsive. I think that's one of the things that we hear a lot is that we're extremely responsive. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with just the infrastructure that we've built here in Texas and our ability to follow through. We could go to the next one. Okay, so options to partner with GoodSide. There are two distinct options. Um, one of them is to purchase tests. Um, and this is really if a district is desiring to uh, self-administer or run the program with their own staff. Um, and, and the best way to contact us is at testing at goodsidehealth.com. Um, all of this will be made available, um, you know, not only in this presentation, but, but afterwards as well. Um, but the, if a district just needs COVID testing in the process, that is option number one. Option number two 
is actually if you would like to not just purchase the test, but have our staffing component as a part of it to help conduct the testing programs for you. And that is, again, same way to contact us, testing at goodsidehealth.com. We will respond and gain as much information as we can to help um, partner with, with the districts across the state and, and deliver um, uh, on your goals. Uh, but if you would like us to provide staffing, we collaborate with the testing co coordinator at the district and we develop an on-site testing plan that's tailored to your district's needs. We have seen so many different um, uh, requests and needs that, that differ from school to school and district to district. Uh, we, have, we have done a, an excellent job of working with our partners to make sure that we're uh, designing something that actually works for our partners versus making sure that, or versus delivering a program uh, that we've created and hoping it works for your needs. Um, Good Side Health, and if we are the staffing uh, component, if you, if you request us to do your staffing as well, uh, we'll conduct the testing. We actually send the results to the in individuals being tested. And again, I mentioned it earlier, we'll dispose of the waste um, as well. Okay, so consent for testing. Uh, Good Side Health provides a fully electronic consent process. Uh, you'll receive a link, um, which can be shared with the students or the staff who will register at that moment. Um, if, the, if the staff, uh, if the district staff are conducting the test, the district will be responsible for ensuring the students and the staff have been consented. We do have our, the program in the process, but, but um, uh, and we will, we will provide additional information to our district partners to make sure that you are, you are ready for this. But, but if you are doing your own testing, um, then this will be something that, that this portion of it will be something uh, the consenting piece will be something that the district staff will take on at that point. Okay, so for results and reporting, um, the district staff will go online to Good Side Health uh, results and reporting site to submit test results. So if, if uh, a district staff is, is running the program, if you've purchased the test through Good Side, uh, we provide a fully electronic and online way, not just to consent, but also to result. Uh, the students and staff um, who consent to be tested will appear in this portion uh, of the link that we send. And then when the testing is complete, the testing facilitator on site will actually in, uh, input the individual results. So once the results are, are input, uh, they're going to be submitted. And the individual that received the test will receive a result to their email address. Um, so during registration process, we'll capture the email address. Um, as, as, as that patient flows through the system and those results are input into the system, there will be an email that is generated and that, that, that whether it's positive or negative, that will be sent out um, to the patient. The parent emails are collected during the process. Um, training materials, Good Side Health will furnish all training materials for the, whichever test it is that, that our district partners are choosing um, and the platform to report. Um, the materials will be made way will be given as, as a hard copy but also electronically um, just to make sure that, that our district partners have everything that they need um, so you'll have a digital training process as well as hard copies that will be uh, made available to you um, and then additionally we like to make sure that those are made available on site at the testing program Okay, so we, we, uh, we anticipated a few frequently asked questions. Um, I did try to move quickly through this presentation so that we could get to your questions as they become available here, but a few of them to get started. How do you contact us? How do you get started with Good Side Health? Um, the email address uh, that we have provided here is the best way to get in contact with us. That is testing at goodsidehealth.com. Again, testing at goodsidehealth.com. Um, is the best way to get in contact with us. Uh, when, will, when will we receive our test if we order through GoodSide? Uh, we'll contact you as soon as we receive the email just to confirm your request. And at that point, uh, we'll ask a few more questions typically to make sure that we are gathering all the appropriate information from you. And once we are able to work through that process, uh, it, it, we, we, we should be able to deliver both the test and the training materials within five business days. Okay, if we want Good Side Health staff to run testing for our district, how quickly can we start? Um, so the staffing piece obviously is um, a little bit uh, a little bit different than the testing. So as soon as we receive the quest again at testing at goodsidehealth.com, 
we will contact you and start to understand your needs um, and develop a plan for your district at that point. Our staff, our staff will then uh, begin testing within 10 business days. Uh, we'll be ready and, 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 and on site within 10 business days to perform on those tests. Okay, so next steps. Um, again, if you're interested in partnering with Good Site Health, um, the best way to get in contact with us is testing at goodsidehealth.com. Um, and I know we've got a few more questions in the chat, so let's see if we can open some of those up and, and answer them in real time. Give me one second, or Tracy or Lindsay, if uh, you want to. Hey, Kevin, um, I answered a couple of questions that were in the chat um, around consent. And I see that Marisol um, just asked another question about do nurses need to administer tests? Um, hold on. So the, do the nurses, so just to clear, I'm going to say the question back. So please correct me if I say it incorrectly. <laughs> Um, but is the, the question seems to be, will the nurses at the individual district level be actually delivering the test, administering the test? That is actually a choice that the districts will make. So when um, a district reaches out to Good Side Health and request, uh, that you request either testing or testing plus staffing, um, at that point, if they choose to only purchase the test, Will the on-site nurses be the ones facilitating? That is how I'm understanding the question. Um, and my response would be, it's really up to the districts to choose uh, the program for delivering the test. We will absolutely work with the districts, even if they're not choosing our staffing, to help make sure that they are set up for success. So we have seen a lot of different solutions um, at, a, at a district level. And sometimes they do utilize school nurses, sometimes they utilize um, other team members. So. Uh, it, it is a that is a district level decision, um, but please correct me if I'm not answering the right question there. Uh, so we'll keep going. Uh, I know you guys just answered the. Did we talk about the PCR rapid test available? Uh, Damon, I just responded to that question around, um, is there a rapid PCR? And the answer to that is no. The rapid tests are the Quidel QuickView, the Quidel Sophia, or the Binax now. Correct. Okay. And I can add one piece to that just for further clarification. Um, the, the PCR, the TechPath PCR that we, that we have provided um, is not, again, not a rapid solution. It is a more traditional PCR solution that does take 24 to 48 hours to result. Um, there are some PCR equivalents um, in the market that are, you know, as an example, the uh, molecular testing that is very akin to PCR testing. We do have experience with it, and it is something that we're, we're going to continue to evaluate. But at this moment in time, it's not an approved test through our process. Uh, we are very familiar with those molecular tests. I don't know if that helps or if that was the question that was being asked there. Um, are we required to follow up on a positive rapid test with a PCR test? Um, so we follow, there's two main guidelines that we, that we follow. There's the standing written medical order um, that, that we have to, to stay within. And then also um, we, we stay within the, the CDC guidelines typically, uh, and we, we can provide additional support as far as uh, and resources as far as where where those can be found. They obviously do change. So I'd hate to, to state something that, that would then be changed at a later date. Um, that's really a decision at a district level from, from what we've seen. If they if a district is um, you know choosing a program that um, you know may or may not be within the CDC guidelines, um, we, that, that's something that we, we don't have any control over. So I hope that answers the question. We, we try about, we follow the CDC guidelines and then the standard written medical order. So Tracy, anything, or Lindsay, anything you wanna to add to that? This, this is Diane Romnes. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so it, the schools need to follow TEA guidance uh, as to whether um, they should follow a rapid antigen with a PCR testing. Okay, thank you. Yep, 
Um, then I see we have a, a longer question. Can you guys see that in the Q&A, uh, Kevin? If you wanted to answer that one out loud, just for the recording and for folks who may not be able to see the Q&A. Sure. Tracy, if you see it, did you read it? Yeah. I don't, yeah. So it is about, so I'll read it. Um, let's see, it is um, somewhat anonymous. They've said, we're told by another company that they would honor our consent, but now they're stating that in order to use their online platform with their student staff uploads, the only way to move forward with that company is to use their consent form. We do not want to do this. We are wanting to leave the company due to this issue. To clarify, will GoodSide Health honor our consent form and our stakeholders will not be required to submit a consent to your to our company? Um, so that's a great question. Um, and, and I would say, um, in our experience, there's really not a way to deliver a test without first getting consent uh, through the entity that's delivering it. So think of it as if you go to your, your physician, you have to sign uh, paperwork to consent to treat uh, with that provider. It's very similar. Um, you know, as much as I'd lo love to be able to tell you that there's a way that we could um, accept another entity's consent to treat forms, um, I don't think that that's something at this time we've been able to figure out a solution for. So if we were able to come on, or if we were chosen to come on site, um, the consenting process would likely come through our process uh, in order to be able to deliver it. So, it, you know, I know I've got a couple of other team members on the call, uh, Tracy and Lindsay, uh, Lindsay especially who's run programs, but typically speaking, that's what we've seen. Um, so please feel free to add to that if I've missed anything. I think, are they um, asking if they, actually perform the tests themselves. So if they just purchase tests, they perform the test, uh, they, but we, we are responsible for the result count. So that's, that's the only, um, okay. the only piece there, but. Got it. I'm sorry. I, I, maybe I misunderstood the question. Um, I thought they were asking, could they use an existing consent to treat and utilize us as a, a, a new vendor? Um, and so what I'm, what I'm hearing is, um, can they, can they buy the test, but, but not use the, our technology registration and consenting process. Um, is, that, is that what you're saying, Cicely? I, I read it as that um, they want to use their own existing consent form, um, but I think maybe who it, the individual that asked the question can help clarify that. Um, if, are you asking if you conduct the test there on your campus yourself, um, and use your own consent form. I think that may be the question, but maybe the person can can clarify that for us. Okay. And, and uh, if we need- said We would test our own. So it sounds like yeah. um, they would purchase the test from us and then they have their own consent form that they would like to use versus using our consent form. Um, we would just have to have them document the results into our system since we are responsible for re reporting and resulting. Yeah, so, and maybe that's something we, we could um, reach back out to um, TEA and DSHS about. Uh, we just wanna make sure we're working within the, the guidelines of the process. Um, if, if we're not administering the test or you're, it, 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 you know, again, I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna answer it incorrectly. We, we, we will, you know, maintain compliance within the process and to the extent that we can allow for a solution that is uh, more tailored to fit your needs and it's compliant, we'll, we'd absolutely um, love, love to do it. So hopefully that helps. Um, I, think, I think this was touched on, Susan asked a question, this may be already answered, but are we required to follow up a positive rapid test with a PCR test? or can we refer them to their PCP? Um, and I believe someone from TEA um, had touched on that. I think it was TEA. Um, but if, you know, if there's something that you could, could add there, that would be, it sounds like the district would, would uh, appreciate it. I, that's, a, that's a TEA guidelines. We follow the CDC standing written order and the CDC guidelines um, as a medical provider. So, you know, as far as TEA, uh, looks like you've unmuted, maybe you could help. Just yep, I'll, yep, I'll jump in there. So TA has posted some updated uh, public health guidance documents as of last week. And so everything in there is what would need to be followed. So just follow those, follow those guidelines.
So Kevin, the um, um, individual who um, was asking questions related to the consent form about using their own um, provided some clarifying information um, that they've been testing over a year using the Texas rapid testing with the Abbott and they were able to use their own consent under the TDEM process and they have a, a, a file saved right now within their district um, in their student management system. So they were just providing some additional clarifying if that um, gave you some more information about it, how to respond to that question. Yeah, first of all, thank you for the clarification. Um, that does help. Um, what I would say is we may need to just, we may need to have a conversation about it and, and make sure that we're just following all the right guidelines. This is not a question that I've, I've heard yet, so I don't wanna uh, mislead you in any way. But I would say, first of all, please reach out to us, testing at goodsidehealth.com, and then we'd be happy to figure this out with you. If, it, if indeed you have a process that is you know, already fit within the guidelines that the state has provided here, um, and we are able to support that, absolutely, we'd love to. Um, I just, again, I don't wanna step outside the, the boundaries of the program, um, but it sounds like that you've been working within, within this program. So again, happy to chat with you directly um, and just take another peel back the onion one more layer here and make sure that we're doing it the right way. But um, if it's possible and compliant, we'll absolutely do it. I would just mention though that, that the Abbott Buy Next Now uh, is, is on back order. So again, I don't, not that that necessarily changes it. Um, another antigen test, uh, it may be plug and play. Maybe that, that easy, but I just wanted to mention that one more time. Um, and then thank you to EA. It looks like posted the guidelines um, in the chat. So for those that were asking about uh, a follow-up PCR test on the heels of a positive antigen test, um, the guidelines are now in the chat. So you're able to, to grab those uh, for further detail. Okay, do we have any other, any other questions? Kevin, this is Diane Romnes, and um, I would like to address the question um, from Christy, I think, <clears throat> who wants to know how many tests can each campus get on their initial delivery? And so um, you'll have to reach out to Goodside to um, talk to them about that, but also keep in mind that you should be ordering only what you use in 30 days. So we want you to order monthly and um, and what you'll use in 30 days. Thank you, I, I missed that one. I appreciate that, Diane. Um, so we, we're we happy to, to work through that with you. Um, just shoot us an email, um, testing at goodsidehealth.com and we'll get to the bottom of it. Um, but like Diane said, we're trying to make sure that we're, we're making a, a monthly order is the goal. Uh, we certainly understand that outbreaks happen and situations arise and we can work with you um, in those situations, but uh, the goal is for a monthly order um, with an estimated volume, but we, we know that things can change. There was also a question about Clio. Um, and so just for clarification purposes, um, Clio for PCR is taking care of at the lab where the specimens are um, run. And then a CLIA waiver can be um, requested. There's information posted on the TEA website as to the application that needs to be filled out and, um, and sent in. So those, and those are for school districts, the CLIA waivers for rapid antigen tests. And we can help with that process as well. So if you reach out to us, we're very familiar with the process. Um, we've done it. We have. Oh, probably 70 or 70, 75 times recently here. So in Texas, so we're very familiar with it uh, and can help, you know, with the CLIA process. Um, are there any other questions that we've missed? I know Tracy looks like she, you've answered a couple throughout the process. Christy had a follow-up question. Um, Christy has said, clarification, I think the problem is reordering. We don't want to start with a company who cannot commit to restocking. That is what we're finding with other companies. So Christy's referring to um, inventory management yeah. and supply. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just provide a little bit more detail, Christy, um, and happy to talk directly as well. Um, 
we uh, there there have obviously been a lot of national shortages specifically around the antigen test um it has um you know it, it has ebbed and flowed quite a bit over the, um, the pandemic we have um we, we have some pretty strategic relationships with the manufacturers specifically quidel um who has you know i i think we, we've been able to to maintain supply i'll just say that for all of our programs we've never had a situation where we have not been able to um restock it and i don't want that to be construed as uh, we're we're immune to the macro level shortages I'm, I'm not saying that at all. Um, we've just been able to uh, maintain a supply that um, fulfills our partnerships. And uh, we hope that we hope to remain to, to continue to be able to do that. Uh, we do have a commitment, you know, with with quite uh, from a prioritization. I'm not saying again, I'm not saying that they will fill every order and they'll fill it every time within, you know, an immediate immediacy. But uh, we, we do we have been able to work together very uh, cohesively. Uh, and we have some uh, third party um, inventory management with McKesson and, and other large um, distributors that have really helped facilitate that and the logistics behind it. So it can get complicated when you look at a statewide program, but because we've been doing it at a very high level, our allocation and prioritization has been near near the top. Um, so that, that has allowed us to maintain our partnerships and continue to have inventory. Kevin, there's another question around expiration date for the Quidel QuickView rapid tests. It's a good question. So it says, what is your expiration date for the Quidel QuickView rapid test? Um, obviously, it depends on when, when they're getting ordered. The, they're, they're constantly being manufactured. Um, the, uh, I think the goal is a one year uh, expiration date. So I know early on there were some concerns because product was getting shipped and had a very short timeline for usage. Uh, we've been able, again, we've been able to maintain the expiration dates within the compliance uh, of the program uh, that have been outlined, which I believe is a year. Um, we're trying to, to get a year for every single antigen test that is shipped out. So uh, we've got a lot of different programs that allow us to reallocate supply across multiple channels to deliver on that. Um, so to the extent that uh, we have other programs that, that don't need that, that uh, long of an expiration date because the test will be used more expeditiously, we're able to maneuver our internal supply around to, to, to deliver on that. Um, do we need to consent for each test or can we use the one uh, for the remainder of the year? That's a good, good question. Um, I do believe in our process and Lin Lindsay, please correct me if I'm wrong. So she is, Lindsay is our vice president of clinical operations and know this is a little bit better than me. But I would say in general, uh, the you do not need to consent every single test. Uh, we do have, I believe in the front end of the, of the registration process, we, we inquire as to whether it's first or a repeat. Um, so if it's a repeat, we're able to utilize the existing consent. Uh, but Lindsay, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're, you're exactly right. The only thing that we kind of request is in, in order to manage traffic flow in and have everything in place for when you show up on site or when your staff members or patients show up on site to get tested that we know that they're coming in and we're ready for them. So you consent one time, but then we will actually have you guys kind of um, depending on your needs and where you guys are located and um, we kind of tailor it to, to what's best for your district, but basically letting us know it'll be just a smaller link to just say, hey, I'm coming into the site today and I need to get tested if it's an individual show up, not necessarily like a group test at one time. So consent stays for the year. Thank you. Any other questions? We'd happy to help any way we can. Um, and we, um, again, we're very responsive. So if you have uh, additional inquiries after the webinar, which is likely to happen, uh, please feel free to, to reach out um, testing at goodsidehealth.com. Uh, you can visit us on our website as well. We do have a contact us page that will direct it to us. So just as a, an additional entry point there, uh, feel free to go to goodsidehealth.com, contact us. Page. Yes, uh, I had two other questions that have come up pretty frequently, uh, and you, I think you touched on one of them a little bit earlier. When it comes to contacting uh, families or parents that are bilingual, specifically Spanish, all of your information in terms of translating it, does it come already like that, or you could just touch base on that once again? Sure. Uh, Lindsay, I'll start and you can finish. Um, short answer is, is yes. 
English and Spanish were built for English and Spanish already. Um, and then we, we do actually have a customer success team, a back office team that supports all of our clients um, and, and they're bilingual as well, have bilingual capabilities to the extent that there needs to be a family uh, involved. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that helps. Got it. And then the last question, in the event that let's say some testing materials arrive to the school or to the site and might be might have been damaged because of packaging or because of the trip. Um, how what are the logistics of getting those replaced or how does that work? That's a great question. Um, I, I I will have to get with our logistics team to make sure that I I, I don't misspeak, but I would tell you just generally speaking, um, if we if we have tests that are delivered that are that are damaged in any way, shape, or form. Historically, we've been able to return those tests uh, as long as we can show that they have not been opened. As an example, for usage, and we're not in the middle of a box. Um, those, you know, Lindsay, you've probably dealt with this more than me, but that, historically speaking, has what 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 we've seen. And then, as far as timing, um, I, unless there's you know something unforeseen that I'm not that I'm not taking into account here, uh, it shouldn't have any different timing from delivery uh, than a normal restocking order. Perfect, thank you for the answer, sir. You're very welcome. Are there any other frequently asked questions or, or anything we have not touched on that would be helpful? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment. I don't know if uh, our colleagues at Dishes wants to jump in, if there are any questions that you feel uh, we should address or bring up within this last nine minutes before we uh, call it a wrap. Well, um, we are happy to stay on for the next eight minutes as well, uh, just in case. Um, and we'll just, we'll sit here and monitor the chat and the Q and A. Um, we'll do you a favor of not, not being on video. So you have to stare at us, but uh, to the extent that something comes up, we're, we'll, we'll stay on here for another eight minutes uh, so that we don't miss any questions in case something comes up. And if not, then thank you all for joining us. We uh, would be very uh, delighted to be your partners. Uh, we are uh, built to deliver COVID testing across the state of Texas, so we'd be happy to, to serve our, our additional Texas districts, and um, we're just thankful for the opportunity to do so. Definitely. Uh, there, there is a new question now in the chat. Okay. Um, I may, yeah. I may have missed this, but do we need to get a clear waiver if you use your company? So if you wanted to kind of touch on that again. Um, I, yeah, I can touch on that again. We, we, we mentioned it earlier, I believe, but we can help you with the CLIA process. Uh, we've done it a, a ton of times across uh, districts. And then a short answer. So I believe. Um, anyone that needs a, a CLIA waiver to deliver these tests, um, you know, we'll, we'll be in the same boat as anyone else, I should say, that needs to deliver uh, an antigen or PCR test. And I, I do have another one, uh, just if you could reiterate this. If a school is in dire straits, they've had an outbreak and they need some tests immediately, what's the quickest that they could get those tests from you all, rapid tests specifically? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously a little situational, um, depending on you know the, the landscape of that, of that moment in time, but I would say generally we have supply on hand, um, and especially if it's a reorder, um, it takes a little bit longer on an incoming first time client just to, to establish the, the program not much time at all, but it does take a look. There's one more, you know, I guess hurdle there, but if you're an existing client, especially, um, you know, we, we've got inventory. So as fast as we can uh, FedEx it or get it, get it in your hands uh, is how quickly we, we get it there. Uh, we had, we have another question that just popped up. It looked like as well. Um, good side staff members are available to come to, to a campus. So it's, it looks like, um, looks like the question is, do you have staff available to come run the program? And the short answer is yes, we do. Um, we have two options for engaging GoodSide. One of them is 
you know, purchasing the tests and the process and having the district administrator administer it. And then the second one, which is the one you're asking about, is where we actually come run the entire program with our own staff. And that is that is an option with this program. So you the, to start the process, you would just um, engage us at testing at goodsidehealth.com. Uh, and we would connect to understand exactly um, all the details around your situation. And we'd make sure that we're putting a program together that fits uh, your needs and achieves the goals that you're looking to achieve there with your district. So not sure where you are in Texas or what it looks like, but uh, we've got a team that, that knows how to do it and can get to the bottom of that pretty quickly. So as we're waiting, I'll just fill, fill the, uh, the airtime with a couple of other things. It seems like it's a, there's a couple of questions that are around process. Um, and so I think, you know, in, in, nationwide, at least, as you look at, you know, tests being delivered in K through 12 space uh, at a very, very high level, not every time it's being delivered by, you know, a primarily a lab company that is partnering uh, with staffing agencies or other organizations to de deliver a program for K through 12. And so where we're very different is we're a healthcare company in our DNA. So we started as a healthcare company and because we have done um, such a significant amount of congregate testing and because our core business is schools, um, we, we certainly have staffing partnerships that allow us to meet the needs um, a little bit differently. Uh, but we also have our own staff and our own processes. Um, we have so many providers, healthcare professionals on site uh, and on staff on our team. Um, so it's just a little bit of a difference. So when you start to think about the programs and the process here, um, we know education and healthcare extremely well, and our programs are built for that. Um, and so that's why we've been able to, to deliver such efficient solutions um, for our, our K through 12 district partners. I would just I would just add we were doing a ton of um, before COVID hit um, our core our core business of delivering health services in schools was doing a lot of rapid testing so think strep and flu which is why we're kind of years in advance of some of this we had to develop processes around rapid testing especially before COVID ever hit um, so we've built upon that um, and that's you know allowed us to move pretty quickly and utilize a lot of technology and programs and workflows that were really already in place before the pandemic. Um, so just again, a little bit, a little bit more about who we are and uh, what, why we're uniquely set up to, to help districts here in Texas. We definitely thank you all. Um, good side. I think we have about two more minutes. So if anyone has any final questions um, for Good Side Health before we uh, dismiss. Um, Please do that, but I want to take a time, take some time right now and say on behalf of Texas Education Agency and the Department, the Texas Department for State Health Services, that we just truly appreciate you all and partnering with you and uh, just your willingness and capacity to support our public and private school systems here in Houston. I mean, I said Houston, wow. Here in Texas, Houston's one of those cities. Uh, and so we just thank you all for that. Um, because we know that our goal is to make sure that kids and staff members feel safe so that kids can get in school and learn. So thank you all. Uh, I appreciate that. We're very excited to continue to serve K through 12 across the state. Um, we're very focused on, on keeping kids healthy and setting them up for success. So uh, thankful to have the opportunity to expand upon what we're doing and, and work in partnership with DSHS and TEA to do so. Um, we'll, we'll remain focused on, on customer service and making sure that we're getting back to all the districts because I think more than anything, what we experience is just um, a need for communication. <laughs> Uh, it's very, things are moving very quickly right now. And, um, you know, districts, schools, pu public and private schools have a lot of questions. So um, we'll make ourselves available to answer those questions and help you out as much as we can through this program or, or otherwise. Well, thank you all so much. And for anyone that is uh, tuning in, like, like they said, if you have any questions, you can email them directly at testing at goodsidehealth.com and they'll get back to you. And if there's nothing further, we're going to go ahead and conclude today's webinar, and we'll look forward to working with Good Side Health. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.